Greetings, I am Herbert Erpaderp, and today I am finally going to tell you the tale of how I painted the Battle Beetle. This is an Airfix 132nd scale beetle kit that I modified slightly using parts from my bits box. If you want to see how I built this, there's a link to the build video in the description and in the card on screen now. Let's get to the painting. Of course, the model was primed black before I began this. The first thing I did was airbrush a base coat of Vallejo model colour Royal Blue all over the body, though I don't waste time trying to get solid coatings on parts that I know aren't going to be blue, like the side armour and fuel tank. That is a nice shade of blue, though it's not really appropriate for a car that's ostensibly been sitting disused for years before being turned into a war car. So to make it look faded I apply model colour Deep Sky. I spray this mostly down onto the upper surfaces of the model from above. With this I'm trying to get the look of a car that has sat in a place where it would be getting a lot of sunlight directly from above. Say perhaps it's been sitting in a garage that's lost its roof. Or it could have simply been parked facing east or west and thus had less sun on the sides to cause fading. Either way that's the kind of look I'm going for, so I don't spray the lighter colour on the sides much at all. To further accentuate this I then lightly airbrush on some model colour sky blue. I try to get this on the centre of the areas I sprayed the previous colour. I do this much lighter so as not to completely overwhelm the two colours below it. A lot of this is probably going to be obscured by chipping, rust and weathering but it's a good start and I'm happy with it so far. After that I wasn't sure if I wanted to add further highlights to the blue yet, so I began base coating the various added details. First I use Vallejo Model Air Russian Green. This is a very thin colour straight out of the bottle and I did thin it just a little bit more. It's thin straight out of the bottle because it's an airbrush paint, obviously. What this means is I had to apply a few coats of it to get a good coverage. As you can see I used it to paint the T-34 fuel tank, of course being careful not to get any green onto the blue areas. I paint the hatch thing on the roof, though not all the way down. I want to paint the joining areas between the car and hatch part with a rusty colour, so I don't worry about painting it green all the way down. I also painted the plates over the windows with this green because I thought it made sense, though I wanted to try and avoid using the same colours too much. Using lots of different colours will help this to look like something built from random parts. I then paint the hedgerow cutters, front and rear, with model colour bronze green. Because I'm a bit of a numpty I didn't film myself painting the front one, but you can kind of see that I did do it. Next I paint the shirts and using model colour German camouflage medium brown. I am of course careful to paint the edges of this part without also painting the body underneath it, though this is kind of a rusty colour so a couple of spots here and there shouldn't hurt. It's a good distance away from the rest of the model so it's not too hard to do. I also painted the visible parts on the back of the shirts and as much as I could, but I didn't bother going to extremes with it, it won't really be visible anyway. I thinned this paint roughly 50-50 with thinner, so it was kind of thin, meaning I had to do multiple coats. That's normal and using more coats of thinner paint will provide nicer results than single coats of thicker paint. Next I used Model Air Scarlet Red which, unsurprisingly, is thin out of the bottle and because it's red it doesn't cover very well until you give it a few coats. As you can see I painted this onto a couple of parts of the flamethrowers. I don't know why, I just thought it might look cool. These areas will probably be quite dark and scorched later on. Because I thought it might stand out and look interesting I used the same colour on the plate over the left rear window. This is a bit streaky but I think that adds to the whole we just used a piece of scrap effect. Now for some more bright colours. I paint the whatever those things on the back are. I don't remember what story I came up with for them. Anyway I used Vallejo game colour filthy brown. Like red, this yellow colour doesn't cover especially well, so to get a good solid colour I do a few coats. Obviously being careful to avoid painting this onto areas I want to keep blue. I also applied this colour to the former Tiger air filters because why not? Maybe they're from the same kind of desert vehicle, who can say for sure? I then based most of the other details in black. I used my primer for this which is Steinal Res Black. I find primer gives better coverage in one coat than the Model Air Black that I have. There's no real reason not to use them as regular paints as well as primer. I started with the knife blades at the front. They're going to be metallic later but black is a good base for that. The rest of the parts like the antenna will remain black or something close to black 
As with all the other base colours, I'm trying to be pretty careful with this to avoid having to fix mistakes on the blue. They are fixable, but it's preferable to avoid making mistakes in the first place by being careful. I made this thing, whatever it is, black because I figured that would make it less distracting for the driver. Because that's important. Nobody wants a distracted driver in their war car after all. Both of the machine guns are also based in black. Not exactly surprising there. Most guns are a black or grey colour, even those mounted to post-apocalyptic deathmobiles. At the back, these things are also black. They look like something that should largely be black. The hose running into the engine compartment from these air filters is also black. It's a small detail, but I think it adds a little bit of interest to the area. And finally, I paint what I consider to be the main armament black too, and thus endeth the base coating of the Battle Beetle. Or at least the exterior. It's pretty colourful and jolly looking. We'll start to change that soon, but first I pay a little attention to the interior. On the seats I apply AK Interactive red brown leather because I think this is a nice colour and it should be light enough to be visible through the windows. It's a very thin colour so naturally a few coats are required. There's not much reason to worry too much about being neat in here. Then I paint the planky things that replace the front passenger seat with model colour beige brown. The idea with this was to represent a light coloured wood. I'm pretty sure this won't be visible at all so I don't do anything else with this. I then return to the outside of the car for some highlighting. On the panels of Schertzen, I dry brush the beige brown I used on the interior wood planks. I focus this largely around the outside of each panel. I also hit the little nubs in the middle of the panels and of course the gap in the centre of the part because that's also the edge of the panels. The effect is kind of subtle but comparing with the unhighlighted part it's obviously different and I think looks much better. However, I wanted to make it stand out just a little bit more. I use model colour cork brown and more or less repeat the previous step, though a little lighter and more focused on the edges. It's still kind of subtle, but there's more variation in the colour there now. Next, I highlighted the air filters with model colour buff. I dry brushed this on fairly heavily, mostly focusing on the upper edges of the part. I wasn't sure if this colour would be too light, but I think it worked out well and created quite a faded look, which is what I wanted. I apply the same colour to the yellow part of the rear end thingy mawatzes. I did accidentally get some onto the black areas, but I'm not especially worried about that. It can of course be fixed or just left there to enhance weathering later. Then I dry brush the red armour plate with Vallejo model colour Old Rose. It might normally be a bit light for highlighting this red, but the idea is this part has lots of light scratches, fading and scuffs on it. I think this worked out well enough. I go a bit further with this and using a fine brush, apply the same colour. It looks a lot stronger when you apply it this way as opposed to the light dry brushing. I apply this along the hard edges and across the tops of the bolts to try and make them pop. I don't worry too much about doing this neatly. It is meant to represent scratches after all, and I add a couple of downward scratches to the middle of the plate too. Then I mix the old rose roughly 50-50 with the scarlet red I used earlier. Using the same fine brush, in this case the Wargamer Insane Detail brush, I apply a highlight to the edges of the red on the flamethrowers. I try to do this pretty carefully though these will probably end up very dirty and blackened, but that's no reason to do this sloppily. I take the same colour and apply this to the red plate pretty much right over the top of the plain old rose. I did this because initially I thought the old rose might have been a bit too bright. Looking at the video of it now I think it would have been just fine, but adding this just adds additional colour to the area and doesn't really take away from anything. Now to highlight the green. I roughly dry brush these areas with a mix of Russian green and buff. The ratio is about 50-50 though definitely not a precise mix. I'm trying to get this on all of the edges and raised surfaces. This is a kind of messy process so of course it also ends up getting on the flat surfaces too, which is fine. It helps them to look faded and scratched, which is exactly what we want here. I then use the same colour to add some hard lines to the straps on the fuel tank using the Insane Detail brush. The hope here is to make the strap stand out from the rest of the tank just a little bit. Next, I use a dry brushing of Vallejo model colour London Grey to add a highlight to the hedgerow cutters. As you can see, I'm focusing this on the hard edges and being fairly rough with it. As with most dry brushing really, 
I decided to use the same colour to highlight all of the black parts of the model too. Except of course for the blades on the front fenders. As with the previous highlights, this is a pretty light colour and I probably wouldn't normally highlight blacks with it, but I figured the extreme difference in colour would be interesting and add to a very faded and worn look that I'm trying to achieve. I had considered highlighting the machine guns with a metallic colour, but I decided it might be a bit too much. Because it's black too, I apply this to the main gun on the front of the Battle Beetle as well. You may notice my hand is now very colourful. That's because I've been using it to wipe paint off my brush while dry brushing. I haven't picked up some bizarre alien skin discolouring disease. Not yet anyway. I look at the model and consider whether or not it needs a few extra touches with the grey. Always a good thing to do before moving on to other colours. It was at this point that I decided the body of the car needed a little bit more highlighting, so I dry brushed it with some model colour sky blue. I add this to the usual edges and raised surfaces but also on some flatter areas, particularly on the upper areas of the model. I'm not too worried if a little bit of this gets on the other parts, though too much will look silly and need to be fixed, so I do try to avoid that. This appears slightly more stark than the areas on which I airbrushed this colour earlier, though not extremely so. I think it helps the blue to look more worn and scratched up. It also makes it look a little bit more consistent with the rest of the colours. You might have noticed that I've left the bars on the front window blue, and it's not because I forgot them. I want them to be quite rusty so I'll get to those after I've applied the chipping. But first, more highlighting, this time on the interior. I apply a light dry brushing of model colour cork brown to the car seats. This probably won't really be noticed but I figure it would be worth it if it does end up being visible. It's not a lot of extra work to add anyway. I didn't bother with any highlighting on the planks. Then I dry brush the tyres with London grey. I wish I had thought to do this while I was dry brushing everything else with this colour. I guess it's a good idea to double check that you've got everything done before switching to another colour. Just to try and add a little something to the upholstery, I add some streaks of model colour buff to the seats. This is intended to represent rips, though looking at it now it doesn't really look like rips. Hopefully in the dark through the windows of the model it will. I tried to do these fairly thin and almost pointy at the ends, though I don't think this would have to be super neat or anything like that. It might never be seen, but I know it's there. It's a little something for people who look extra close. Ok so the exterior of this model is looking pretty jolly and colourful, and that's cool but it doesn't really look very post apocalyptical, so it's time for weathering. I start with chipping. I use the sponge chipping method to apply some dark chips. The colour I used here is a mix of roughly 1 quarter Vallejo model colour mahogany brown and 3 quarters model air german grey. It's not an exact mix and I do fiddle around with it until it looks right to me so I lose track of the exact ratio pretty easily. I just mix the colours until I think it will look right on the base colour. The colour is meant to represent a tarnished metal under where the paint has been chipped off. I don't use metallics for this because I just don't think it looks right. Scratches and exposed patches of bare metal don't really stay shiny for very long unless it's regularly being rubbed to a shine by something. I do have a quick tips video about this technique if you would like more in depth information as to what I'm doing here. A link is in the description and in a card on screen now. Next I take the same colour and use my insane detail brush and paint the colour into the various physical dents in the car's body, as well as the bullet holes I drilled into it. I also paint a few thin lines to represent longer deeper scratches, just to add a little bit of variation to the chipping. I then repeat the process, more or less, but this time I'm using model colour chocolate brown to represent some very dark rust. I do this a lot lighter than the grey chips because I don't want it to be overwhelming. It's meant to be just a hint at spots of rust or maybe even just dirt. I also brush this into places I want to be heavily rusted, like the area under the commander's hatch, which in my imagination is just bits of scrap metal and weld. The builders just didn't worry about how rusty it might get. I'm going to add a lot of rust to this area and I think the chocolate brown is a nice base colour for that. I applied this colour after the chipping because I didn't want grey chips on this area and I didn't want to have to paint the area twice if I inadvertently got grey chips on it, which I probably would have. I also painted the bars over the windshield with this colour because they're going to be very rusty too, but I didn't get a lot of video of myself doing that. This is the result so far. I tried not to go overboard with the chipping. I do often end up going too far with it, even though I usually try not to. I think it's just about right this time. 
Next, I decided to paint the knives on the front of the mudguards. I used a Tallery flat gunmetal for this. It's a nice metallic silvery colour that isn't excessively shiny and bright. I did this after the chipping effects for the same reason I added the base colours for the rusty areas after the chipping, so I wouldn't have to redo it in the event of accidental chipping. I used the same colour to paint the hubcaps. I like to imagine these have stayed at least somewhat metallic looking even after all these years. The actual rims which are visible around the outside of the hubcaps probably didn't need to be metallic, but meh, I did it anyway. They'll probably end up very rusty later. I then applied a wash of army painted dark tone thinned roughly 50-50 with water. I paint the entire model with this, allowing it to fill gaps and gather along ridges. I try to avoid having it pool up on flat surfaces though because that can cause bad looking tide marks from the wash drying unevenly. And just so they don't feel left out, the same wash goes on the wheels too. I then applied a coat of Minotaur gloss varnish which will provide a really nice gloss layer to protect the layers of acrylic paint from the coming steps which involve enamels and white spirits. I didn't film myself applying the gloss, you're not missing much. Next, I apply AK Interactive track wash around the wheel rims, since it would be more fitting if they weren't all shiny and new looking. I go fairly heavy with this, safe in the knowledge that it can be removed fairly easily later on. I also apply it to the exhaust pipes because I feel like this will help them look rusty. It also goes on the front hedgerow cutter, again fairly heavily and messily. It doesn't matter a whole lot if it does get on the surrounding areas. At this point it's pretty much all going to blend together and create a dirty, rusty look. That said, I do try to keep it fairly contained to the areas I want to be rusty, like the bars on the front and the area around the commander's hatch. Then I apply AK Interactive Dark Brown Wash for green vehicles. This is obviously not a green vehicle, but I do what I want. I apply this to all the gaps and lines on the car as well as some of the other patches that I would like to look a little bit grimy and dirty. I don't worry about being neat with this at all because it can be wiped off later which is actually the next step. All I'm really doing here is using some clean white spirit on a clean brush and wiping away the dark brown wash from places I don't want it. I leave this to dry and then apply another coat of gloss varnish. This does take some time because of all the drying time the enamels and varnish need, but if you don't apply the protective varnish coats, you will constantly be messing up the previous layers of enamel, which as you might imagine would be quite annoying. Next, to create a few more spots of grime and dirtiness, I apply AK Interactive Dark Streaking Grime. I apply this to the fuel tank, particularly the filling lid thing. I add spills under the tank, splotches under the guns and under the air filter things, around the openings for the minigun and flamethrowers, around the antenna, and anywhere I can think of that might attract a bit of extra grime. Just like the previous step, after letting the dark streaking grime dry for a little while, I use a clean brush with clean thinner to tidy it up. I'm not only using it to make streaks, but also kind of feathering it into the body colour to try and represent a sort of darkened, dirty or even scorched look around those areas. I do remove quite a lot of it, but what remains is subtle and I think it adds to the overall look of the model. Then, before applying the next layer of gloss varnish, I decided to try some pigments for rust. I rarely use these, almost never. I put some thinner onto the areas I wanted to make rusty, then I used an old brush to dab on some pigments. MIG pigments old rust. I just dab it on. I assume this is the kind of dabbing all of the kids are talking about these days. It's nice they've got a hobby. I don't worry too much about being neat with this. It doesn't matter too much if bits of rust get on any other areas. That happens in the real world, so why not on my model? It was my hope that the fairly heavy application of pigments would help create a slightly bumpy, rusty texture. I also put the rust pigments in the wheel arch areas and on the exhaust pipe. I almost forgot about those. I then repeat the process, only slightly lighter, this time using MIG Pigments Standard Rust. Again, I do this fairly messily. Also, because pigments are pretty messy, you should put some paper down if you want to keep your work surface clean. Next comes a layer of gloss varnish. I airbrushed this layer of varnish, though I had been hand brushing the other layers. The reason for this is so the pigments aren't disturbed by the act of brushing the varnish on. I think that would have turned the varnish into a paint and been quite messy do try to avoid that. Continuing to make the rusty areas very rusty, I apply AK Interactive Light Rust Wash for green vehicles. At this point I was sort of just guessing as to how this would work. 
I roughly painted some of the wash on and then spread it about with a brush with thinner on it, kind of blending it in a little bit and trying to neaten it up. I apply more of this wash to the bolt heads and the points on the front window bars where they cross. I do this because I think that's where bits of bright orange rust would probably accumulate. And then I wipe some of it away. Of course I wipe some of it away and then apply a bit more and then wipe some of it away. Such is the glory of enamel paints, you can remove and reapply them to your heart's content, just as long as you've got a good gloss coat beneath them. Then I had what I think was a good idea. I applied the light rust wash with a tiny bit of thinner mixed into it into any bullet holes I could find and some of the deeper scratches. Surely those areas would have a little bit of rust in them. I wipe away the excess as I go. I also do this around the opening for the minigun. I figure this was probably just cut right out and not treated for rust or anything like that. Again, I remove the excess as I go, reapplying, removing and then reapplying as many times as I felt I needed to get the look I wanted. At this point I decided it would be good if the hedgerow cutters were rusty too, and I did with them what I just did with the holes in the bodywork. That rust colour was a lot brighter than I had anticipated, and I wasn't really thrilled with the result at this stage. So I followed it up with some AK Interactive rust streaks applied in much the same way as the previous rust. For the most part I'm thinning this out and spreading it with the clean thinner loaded brush as I'm going. The hope with this was that it would darken down some of the light rust and kind of blend together with it to create a nice rusty look. I didn't video myself adding either of these rust colours to the wheels, but I did do it. Trust me, you'll be able to see it at some point. I follow this with yet another coat of gloss varnish. At this point I realised I hadn't painted the steering wheel or the radio inside the car. I figured I should probably do that before applying any dust effects. I base coated the radio with Vallejo model colour brown violet. Would you be surprised to learn that this was quite tricky to get at with my brush? No? Well, it was. Probably worth doing though. Then I painted the steering wheel with model colour mahogany brown. This was slightly easier to paint than the radio. I was able to poke my brush in through the windows to get at the steering wheel, but it was still quite tricky to get a good solid coating without any of the blue showing through. I got there eventually. To add some interest to the radio, I applied game colour filthy brown to a random circle thing and this, I don't know, dial? Whatever it is, it's filthy brown now. It can be seen through the windows if the light is right. Then, because I thought it needed a little bit more, I applied a spot of model colour sunset red in this little recess. It is there and probably won't ever be seen under normal lighting conditions. I then joined the frame to the rest of the car. I didn't glue it into place, just in case for some reason I need to access the interior again. It doesn't really clip together, but the friction is strong enough to hold the two parts together. Time to apply some dust effects, starting with AK Interactive Summer Kursk Earth. This is thinned roughly one part Kursk Earth to three parts White Spirits. I spray this lightly and focus mostly towards the bottom and rear of the car. I figure that's probably where the most dust would accumulate. The trick with this is to kind of just dust it on, because, well, it represents dust. Makes sense, doesn't it? Next, dust from above. This is AK Interactive Dust Effects, thinned the same way as the previous colour. I sprayed this top down because I thought it would look good as a sort of highlight almost. This is a very light grey dust colour, and it didn't quite end up looking how I'd hoped it would. It was a bit too light. Maybe I went a bit too heavy with it. I dealt with this by applying a bit more Kursk Earth over the top of it. I tried to be very light with this and it seems to have worked as I'd hoped. I also applied a bit more Kursk Earth to the front of the model. This is going to be a very dusty battle beetle. I then took a clean brush with clean thinner and used it to wipe some of the dust off the guns and knives. I figured these might be slightly less dusty. This didn't totally remove the dust but it does make those parts look slightly less dusty overall. They do still have some of the dust colour in the gaps which I liked the look of. I then sprayed some scorching around the flamethrowers using black primer. I do this very carefully and lightly with low air pressure. It would be very easy to way overdo this, but I think I got it just about right. I also sprayed this at the exhaust pipes, but you can barely see it. Then for just a little more detail and interest, I add a streak of AK Interactive fuel stains to the cap on the fuel tank. I used a little bit of thinner to thin it out on the model and streak it down just that little bit further. I wasn't sure if I should do this after the matte varnish or not. I could always apply more of this later though if the matte does ruin this effect. 
I then applied the matte varnish, which in this case was AK Interactive Ultra Matte. I didn't film this because I did it at 3am and just completely forgot. And that's the Battle Beetle completed. I could probably continue fiddling with the weathering, but I might end up overdoing it. Sometimes you just need to step away and say it's finished. I'm satisfied enough with this and really don't want to end up making it worse. I did get a little bit of frosting with the matte varnish, particularly around the fuel tank area, but it's not too bad and I think it actually adds to the overall dusty look. It is still quite a colourful vehicle, but it's also quite dirty, and I don't think it would stand out like a sore thumb as it would have when I'd applied the base coats only. It's clearly been out and fighting and surviving for a long while and only suffered minimal damage, like a few nicks with bullets. I think the rust I've added to these bullet holes really helps them to stand out just that little bit. They're not super obvious, but they do draw the eye just a little bit. The rusted bullet holes make me think it's been a while since this car took a hit. Maybe it's a scout vehicle and doesn't get into a lot of direct combat. It's fun to make up stories for models. I was tempted to add some blood to the knife blades at the front, but I thought that might be a little bit cheesy. My story for this is the crew cleans the blood off their car to prevent infection. Seems reasonable to me. I'm really happy with my choice to use blue as the car's body colour. It was either that or red. You know, because red goes faster. But I think the blue has worked out much better than the red would have. It contrasts nicely with the rusty colour and helps it stand out more than it would have against a red base. So, now that's done, I can build myself another post-apocalyptic war vehicle. I won't be doing it right away, but I will do it. This thing was a lot of fun to build and paint, and I think it's ended up looking pretty cool. What do you think? Would you like to ride around in the Battle Beetle? Do you think it's a horrible death trap? Both? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to do things like subscribing here on YouTube and following me on social media. Check the links in the description to find me. If you really like the things I do, please consider helping to support the channel over at Patreon. Patrons get to see my videos a bit earlier than everybody else, especially special ones like this. They also get some patron-only bonus content and of course access to the patron-only Discord channel. I shall return soon, so until then, happy apocalypse surviving and thanks for watching. Farewell.